Welcome to Bartonsville. I'm not a speaker type person, so I'm going to make this real quick. I uh, want to really thank Reorg. Uh, they've done a great job in our storage space. They take, took stuff basically that was being stored on uh, concrete and moved it from the concrete up on the shelving, increased our storage space, and actually that place up there looks a lot nicer than it did before. <laughs> so I'm going to now pass this off to Simon, and as I say, thank you very much for all the hard work the team did. <laughs> Hey, good morning everyone. Uh, my name is Simon Lambert. I'm um, Preservation Development Advisor uh, for CCI. And uh, on behalf of the Park Parksville Museum, I'd like to welcome you here today for the Reorg West Adventures in Storage Reorganization Conference. And I'd like to welcome also our uh, online audience. We are webcasting this event, so I'd like to say hello to everyone online. Um, but I'd like to begin by acknowledging the Nanus First Nation on whose traditional territory this conference will take place. Um, I'd like to thank as well the British Museums, uh, British Columbia Museums Association, our partner, and as well as ECRON. And I would also like, of course, to thank the Parksville Museum for hosting us this week for this intense experience of reorganizing a storage area in three days and for hosting this conference today. So without further ado, let's begin. So many of you know, many of you who work in museums, this is not a picture of the Parksville Museum storage. <laughs> uh, but many of you who work in museums, uh, in small museums, in large museums, all over the world, will recognize uh, situations like these. Um, they're quite common, um, and they're the same everywhere. So collections are inaccessible, aisles being blocked, uh, objects that just cannot be used uh, for, to support museums' missions. So these are kind of images from around the world of different storage areas that face similar challenges. So I, I guess I'd like to begin by uh, putting this a little bit into context. Um, in 2011, ECROM and UNESCO launched a survey um, about storage and tried to understand uh, what the main challenges were uh, for institutions across the world. And I'm just going to begin by showing you the Canada segment of the data. So this is 86 museums in Canada who responded to this survey. And here are some of the highlights of those results. So 53%, so about one out of two museums, said that their storage units were overcrowded. 38% um, said that uh, they lacked management support to make improvements in storage. So it was a real challenge to kind of advocate for the need to care for collections and storage and to uh, make improvements to that situation. In 21% 20, of museums, it was unclear who was responsible for the storage area. Um, and in 22% as well, it was, there was absolutely no location system in storage. So it was impossible to retrieve objects using the documentation system. So just to give you a sense of what the situation is worldwide, um, we're now looking at 1,490 museums across 136 countries. And this is just to show you that Canada is not a unique uh, case. We also isolated countries like Canada, the US, the UK, Australia, that had the higher numbers of respondents. And we isolated those and compared those to the rest of the data. And it actually was exactly the same, <laughs> or very similar. So we, we see that it's really not an issue of um, developing versus developed countries, large museums versus small museums. It's really uh, kind of universal challenges that we're all facing with our collections. So when you're faced with a situation such as this, um, where do you start? Where do you begin? Uh, do you do an inventory? Do you start moving objects around? Do you start uh, you know, purchasing storage equipment? So this is the very problem that uh, ECROM and UNESCO uh, faced. Um, and well, they, they, they understood that museums were facing this problem and they wanted to help, especially the smaller museums, with limited resources and access to outside expertise 
to tackle these challenges. So when you start from a situation that is, has been abandoned or that has been undergone you know, troubling times over the past uh, uh, few years, well, where do you start? So one of the ways that Reorg approaches this issue is by trying to compartmentalize this problem. So by looking at you know, what issues uh, can I pick out of this problem that have to do with management? And what issues are related to the building and to the space usage? Uh, what issues are specifically linked to the collection and its vulnerability to some of the agents of deterioration? Uh, what uh, issues have to do with the furniture, the choice of storage furniture, and all the small equipment that you need to work with collections? So it was found that you know, if we kind of se separated this into these um, different components, it was easier then to plan for improvements. And so this is kind of the approach at its core. And so in 2006, ECROM and UNESCO uh, gathered a team of museum professionals who were from different parts of the world and who had either participated in, um, most of them had participated in ECROM courses in the, in, in the past. And they had had some experience in uh, upgrading uh, storage, uh, collection storage areas in various parts of the world. So each of them had had experience in kind of trying to, to get a handle on the collection in storage. And so each of them had different perspectives to bring to the table. And what was done is that uh, there was a brainstorming session where each of them kind of described what were the steps that they took in order to address these issues in the institution where they were working. So what were the different tasks that had to happen in order to start from a disorganized storage to a reorganized storage? And so all of this led to the creation of the reorg method, which is now separated into four phases, which first begins with phase one, which is getting started. So the idea of phase one of reorg is to create the best possible conditions for a successful project. So it's really critical, and we saw that this week during the, the, uh, the reorg that we did here at Parksville Museum, that you have to have an effective team that can communicate well and that can collaborate. And so, and it's also necessary to have people that have specialized skills, because sometimes you need people with, uh, you know, that are good at preparing presentations, at doing documentation, uh, at carpentry, uh, at estimating space needs. So everyone has or specialized conservation skills, rolling textiles, making boxes, all these kinds of things. So everyone has something to bring, and it's, it's really important to understand that from the beginning because uh, that's going to help plan the project. Um, it's also uh, useful to have, here we say, well-organized working areas. So um, most of the participants that have gone through reorg recognize that at some point you need to uh, remove collections from the storage area in order to uh, reorganize it. And so it's useful to have a space uh, that we call a swing space, where collections can go from the collection storage into another space while improvements are being made to the original uh, area. And so it's useful to have a collection uh, swing space. It's useful to have a place where your team can have lunch and can have, uh, you know, breaks. Um, so th all these kinds of working spaces need to be thought out. It has been done in the past um, uh, without a swing space. So in some cases, there is no other space other than the actual storage to uh, bring collections. And so uh, some participants have had to move collections uh, from area to area, creating temporary swing spaces. It can be done. Uh, and just getting, I guess, for the first phase, it's important to have all the basic tools that you'll be needing for your project, such as floor plans, which are critical to have, and other kind of uh, working tools and materials. Phase two of reorg is called the storage condition report. So uh, in the same way that if you're conserving an object and you do a condition report for an object before you intervene, and you treat the object, you would do a condition report for your storage area to understand what the various needs are. So we're looking at things like space efficiency, 
protection, um, actually the, the, the building envelope and how well it protects the collection from the main agents of deterioration. We're looking also at things like the administrative framework. Uh, so, because that helps us understand some of the uh, root causes for the situation as it, as, as it is found today. Um, also looking at the collection specifically. Uh, so, what is it, what is it composed of? Um, how fast does the collection grow? Um, equipment as well to work with the collection. So we're looking at, uh, are there any things missing um, that the staff needs to work with the collection that they don't have that are potentially putting the collection at risk? So you'll recognize these things as those four components. So that's what the storage condition report focus, focuses on, is analyzing those four components and understanding where some of the weaknesses are. Now, the storage action plan is phase three, and that's where uh, we start to define the tasks and establish a project timeline. And so define the tasks, so we, we identified issues in, in phase two, and now in phase three, we're trying to develop a step-by-step -step plan to correct those issues. And here you see uh, participants from the Reorg Ontario group using the uh, Reorg planning chart which we used this year, uh, and it was actually pasted all <laughs> over this wall, uh, and it helped us to keep track of the progress of the project while 18 people were working at the same time. And so it was a great communication visual, visual communication tool that everyone, I think, uh, appreciated. Phase four, then, is the implementation. Um, and so this is actually very quite simple. It's uh, putting all those, that plan into action. And so it uh, requires a lot of work, sometimes being done in parallel at the same time. Um, you know, when we do these workshops uh, in three days and we have 20, about 20 people working at the same time, it takes a lot of coordination. And so it helps to really define what uh, the objectives are for each group uh, working simultaneously. So what is reorg? So it's the four components, the building and space, management, collection, furniture, and small equipment. It's the four phases, and it's also 10 quality criteria. So how do we know whether or not our reorganization has been a success? Uh, so reorg establishes these 10 criteria. I'm not going to go over all of them right now, uh, but I can just show you two as an example. So one of them is the storage rooms contain only collection objects. So if at the end of your project, you're still storing your archival supplies, or your <laughs> wrapping supplies in the storage area, then you haven't met that, uh, <laughs> that criteria. Um, of course, in cases where uh, there is no other area where those things can be stored, it's possible to, to, to define an area where that is identified as non-collection item storage, such as supplies, and, but it, it shouldn't go into the collection area. <laughs> and that's the, the, one of the, the principles of the reorg. Another example is every object has a designated location in storage and can be located within three minutes. So, of course, um, at the end of a three-day reorg, that might not be possible still. But um, once we have addressed the physical reorganization, so the actual kind of getting control, regaining control over the collection, then its incremental steps can be uh, added afterwards. And um, once, once the collection is now visible, accessible, uh, and has a, a location system in place, then something like an inventory can be done afterwards much more easily. And so um, once the inventory has been done and all the <coughs> locations have been recorded, then it should be possible in a small museum with one or two storage areas to find objects within three minutes. So. This is the uh, reorg package, and which you will find now online um, on the ECROM website. The um, URL is below, so if you just uh, search in a search engine, ECROM, reorg, you will find this, um, or just reorg method. Um, so there are four, four parts to it. So the first part is the self-evaluation tool for collections and storage. So this is a self-assessment checklist, has about 40 or so questions. 
uh, looking at those four different components. So I'll just give you an example of one of these questions or statements. So one of them in the collection section says, objects can be retrieved with limited handling of other objects. So now you have a series of options. So if you, um, if you, if, and you, you choose the option that fits best uh, your, your own situation. So the first one is a maximum of two objects must be handled to retrieve the one desired. So if that's your case, that's kind of what we're aiming for, is trying to define what does it mean when we say uh, good access to collections. So the way Reorg attempts to define it is you shouldn't have to move more than two other objects or boxes or items in order to get to another one. Um, and so you get six points for that. And then if you have, in some cases, more than two objects must be handled, you get four points, so, so on and so forth. So you would give a score to that uh, statement, and then at the end you would add all of the sections up, the score for each section, and you could score your storage uh, and understand whether your uh, collection is at serious risk and requires uh, an immediate um, uh, reorganization project, or if only uh, some small improvements are needed. So this, is, this helps also to communicate to decision makers and to funding agencies uh, the need for such a project. So the first uh, kind of uh, component of the method is the reorg uh, workbook. And so this includes things like uh, checklists, step-by-step -step, um, guidance, and various ideas uh, and solutions. So I'm just going to show you a little bit phase one, getting started. This is what it looks like. So you have checklists. You have various uh, suggestions and ideas on how you could plan your uh, working spaces in this case. So the image you, show, you see here is, a, um, is a, a picture of the work table with all the tools that we need during a practical reorg project. So we had a table set up like this in the back, and, and those of you who are here at the Parksville Museum and visit the storage later, you'll see where that table was, and it was a kind of a central location, and it had um, all the tools outlined uh, and identified so that we knew where to bring stuff back so we wouldn't lose any of our tools. Um, the second part is the worksheets. And so um, here we have um, um, uh, worksheets that can be filled in. So they're Word, Word uh, documents, forms, and various templates that can be used to collect the information, especially during the second phase, which is the condition storage report where you're trying to identify what the, the needs are. So you have very types of, various types of assessment uh, check, um, forms and report templates. Now the third component is the uh, additional resources. So this includes um, uh, tools for cases that are special. So they don't fit in the um, you know, most projects, you might not need some of these tools, but some special cases might require them. So we've kind of put them in a separate package. Um, so you have information about various uh, products and materials for storage, uh, various uh, circulation coefficients to know how wide your aisles should be, um, and some kind of exercise where you can try to find objects in storage using the location codes and to see how, uh, how good you, how long does it take to find objects in your storage area. So these kinds of fun exercises are included there as well. Um, so all of this uh, material can be found, as I mentioned, on the eCrom webpage um, and is available right now. Uh, there's also a tutorial video that CCI uh, produced uh, that kind of is uh, seen as a fundamental introduction to the method and to the various tools that is on there. And just to give you an idea of the various tools that we've actually incorporated into the method uh, uh, that are kind of additional, additional to the additional resources, we have a YouTube channel uh, where we will be posting the recordings of this webcast today. Um, we have a Tumblr blog, which includes a whole bunch of so solutions that participants, past participants, or people from around the world have sent us. Uh, we're looking here for cost-effective solutions that uh, use local materials uh, that are safe for collections, 
So if you have any uh, solutions that you have implemented in your museum that you'd like featured here, please send them to us and we'll be glad to add them here. So it's a, a kind of visual database of various ideas that exist out there. And one of them that you see on the screen will be presented by Elizabeth Hall today. <laughs> Um, so we have also a Facebook uh, group, Reorg International, where if you're watching online, you'll be actually on the page at the moment. Um, and I'd like to take a moment to just talk about Stash, which is not a Reorg product, but we're partnering with them on various initiatives. And they offer a, a more a kind of step-by-step -step approach to designing various storage solutions. And so um, whereas the Reorg Tumblr is more of a visual idea database or bank kind of thing. Um, the Stash website is very much a step-by-step -step, uh, uh, tool where you have a list of materials, steps, and they're illustrated, and everything is peer-reviewed. And so um, it's a great resource and very complementary to Reorg. So here you see an example of some of the guidance that's there. So at CCI, we've been, uh, since 2014, uh, coordinating the Reorg Canada uh, project, which is a five-year uh, project uh, involving museums from across the country. The first course that we did was in Ontario, and here you see the museums that were participating in that course uh, in year one. Uh, in year two, we were in the Atlantic region, and so here are the museums that were participating there. Year three, we were in Quebec, and here are the museums that participated there. And we will be hearing today from two of the participants, well, from one of the participants. They're both here, but one of the participants will be presenting, Chloe, uh, will be presenting uh, their project uh, that they implemented uh, last year. And they were both part of the group of participants this week. And so we, every year, we bring participants from the previous group into the new group to share their knowledge and their experience with the new group. So it's kind of a snowball effect. And this year, uh, we have participants uh, in uh, the Yukon and British Columbia, and we'll be hearing from them today, um, a little bit later. And the last region is uh, Prairies in the North. And so we'll be uh, next year taking Reorg uh, to that region. We have not selected the institutions yet, but if you are from that region, so Manitoba, <laughs> Saskatchewan, Northwest Territories, and Nunavut, and you're watching today, just know that we're coming to your region next year, and so it would be great to have you as part of the participating organizations. Uh, Reorg isn't just a Canadian phenomenon, it's an international phenomenon. So so far, the reorg method has been applied by at least 83 museums in 27 countries, and those are the ones that we know about, and so there are pro probably more, uh, but these are the ones that have been uh, working on projects using the method. Uh, where you see a star is where there has been a, uh, a national program. So we have one in Canada, we have one in Southeast Europe, we have one in Africa, um, and so on and so forth. Which brings me to Southeast Europe, because we will be hearing um, right after I finish this talk from a, uh, the, one of the coordinators from uh, Reorg Southeast Europe. And so this is a program, a regional program that involved uh, institutions in several countries. And so this was a project that started in 2014 and has been kind of having various uh, associated uh, activities since then. And so we'll be hearing from him very soon. Now, um, for us here today, uh, this is our schedule. So as soon as I finish this introduction, uh, we'll be going to uh, speak to Velko, who will be uh, talking about his recent experience in Croatia with a workshop there at the Ethnographic Museum in Zagreb. Then we'll have a coffee break. And then we will be going on to the presentations from the various participants uh, from Reorg West, uh, who will be sharing um, their condition reports. So these, these uh, museums have not yet implemented their projects. Some of them have started, 
um, but uh, they have not completed their projects. So it's, it's in progress. And so we'll be hearing from them on what the various challenges are in their own museums. Uh, after lunch, then, we will be hearing from two of the participants from this week who participated in the three-day reorg at uh, Parksville Museum. So we'll be seeing some nice before and after uh, photographs and uh, kind of an idea of all the different projects that were going on throughout the week. Then we'll be hearing from Ken Hassel from uh, Alberta, from the Atlas Coal Mine National Historic Site, who will be sharing um, a project that was implemented there. And uh, absolutely unrelated to Reorg uh, Canada, the Reorg Canada program, um, so absolutely in, um, independent, but we're very uh, interested to see uh, what does it mean when you uh, implement a program, um, uh, project like this um, on your own without any guidance or any uh, kind of support from, the, from the, the main organizers? So I'm very curious to see. Um, then uh, dealing with the unexpected, so we'll be hearing from uh, Chloé uh, Ouellet Riendo from the Société d'Histoire de Sherbrooke who was one of the participants of Reorg Quebec. And then we'll be finishing the day with Elizabeth Hall from uh, the Yukon Paleontological Program. We'll be talking about some storage solutions that she developed in her storage areas to save space. Great. Thank you. <laughs>